and uh, I came to an intersection and I found myself on Good Luck Road. And I, I thought, boy, that, if, I was to, if I could pick a street to live on, that would probably be a, a, a pretty good one to live on. Uh, and it got me thinking about various roads in this world. And I know it, the hour is early this morning, so I wanted to just give you a little exercise, uh, give you some famous roads or streets in the world, and uh, think about why, why they're significant. So let me show you the first one. Pennsylvania Avenue. So here, in, especially in our area, we're going to know that right off the top of our head. Uh, President's House and certainly many other things in our government down Pennsylvania Avenue here in D.C. Um, okay, not everyone got that so quick. Bourbon Street, one of the most uncomfortable places for the pastor ever to walk down. Uh, but this past summer when we were in New Orleans with the kids uh, for the youth gathering, we took them at midday, we took them one block on Bourbon Street to say we were there. But uh, it seemed to me that was about the best time of day to ever be there. Um, next one. Broadway. Broadway. So a lot of uh, aspiring actors and actresses, they want to get to Broadway. And a lot of us enjoy visiting there. I was there for the first time this week. Uh, but I think we met countless people who just hoped to get there someday. Uh, this next one, Abbey Road, Abbey Road made uh, so famous by the Beatles. How about this one? Okay, you were more excited about Abbey Road. <laughs> so, um, but certainly the financial, one of the financial epicenters of the world. Um, how about this one? We have some people who have probably have been there or, or speak French better than I can, but there's obviously the Tour de France ends there the final day. And this one. Okay, we are in church. Via Dolorosa. So in Old City, Jerusalem, the wa this is where they would trace the path of Jesus on the cross. People would have done the Via Dolorosa on Friday. Um, there are many, many more places, streets, famous streets we could nominate, the, but I bet you each of us has certain streets in the world we would just love to visit. We would just, we could name them in our head. We would love to go there. Um, some roads are important because of their sense of history. Some roads are uh, attractive to us because of their uh, shopping or their cultural opportunities. Some roads are a hub for certain activities. Some roads, though, help us to remember important events and stories. But uh, fundamentally, when we think about it, a road helps us get from one place to another. Uh, roads help us move from one place to another. Roads connect us, unless the road taken takes you to, uh, to a dead end. And uh, one of the things we've been, we, our, our theme this Lent has been the way. And the early followers of Jesus were known as the people of the way. But, but in the Greek, the, 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 the word translated for the way is often translated the road or the path. Uh, some 2,000 years ago, Jesus' followers, you know, they'd been following him up in Galilee, being excited by the message, by the way he was trying to teach people to live. And they, uh, they journeyed down the road from Galilee, some 40 miles or more, to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. And as we remembered last Sunday, things started out on a high note, but that road really crumbled as the week went on. As uh, Jesus was captured, as his, followers were, uh, as his followers fled, and ultimately as he was put to death. The pilgrims who walk on the, the Via Dolorosa, they are sort of tracing this path of sorrow, this road of sorrow. And ultimately, when you, when you follow it, it, it ultimately seems like you're walking to a dead end. It's at that, that the final stop there, Jesus' movement, his way should have ended. But you know, Easter reminds us that uh, Jesus built a bridge to a whole new road that's every bit as real as the roads I have mentioned before. And it's a road, in a sense, that we are all walking on. We're all journeying on it day by day. It's called the road to Emmaus. And it's uh, far more than just a literal road. It, uh, I think the road to Emmaus really is a description of the life of faith, the journey of faith. On that first Easter, uh, two of Jesus' followers, uh, Cleopas, 
and uh, an unnamed follower. And I, fi I find it really compelling that they didn't choose to name the other one. Either they didn't know it or it invites us to say maybe we're that second follower. Uh, they're walking along. They're on the go. And the best way to describe it, and it's very much a description of what many people I know experience, they're disappointed, they're living in an uncertain time, they're confused, things hadn't necessarily turned out the way they thought it should have, their hope had been uh, sort of extinguished, the world situation and current events around them were sort of dragging them down, they felt like their connection to God was gone. They struggled to believe in God anymore. And one of the things I love about that story is that how Jesus chooses to enter into that story. He shows up unexpectedly in the midst of their struggle, and they do not recognize him. And I always wonder, how many times in my life and your life does Jesus show up unexpectedly, and we just don't see it? We don't realize it right away. But what's important to remember in this story is how Jesus shows up. He doesn't show up as a judge. Realize, what, the way he shows up in the, in the Easter story today is he shows up as a friendly person. He shows up as a person who listens first and foremost to what's going on in the life of his followers, in those followers so long ago in, the life of our, of, in our life as well. And what Jesus does is he walks with them, he accompanies them, and slowly but surely as he listens and as he begins talking to them, he starts to restore their faith, starts to rekindle the hope in their heart. And ultimately what he does is he helps reconnect them in a supportive way to other people, gives them, restores their mission. You know, as the story comes to an end, it uh, says they arrive in the village of Emmaus. And I love how, it, how Jesus sort of walks on ahead of them. He's one or two or three or steps ahead of them. And how often is that true in life that Jesus is always three or four or 150 steps in front of you and I? And they beg him, Jesus, or they, they, beg, they beg this stranger, would you come on in? They urge him to stay. They extend hospitality to him. There's something about him that is compelling. So he does go in. And they share their resources with him. They share a meal with him. And as they hand him the bread, all of a sudden, as he blesses it and as he returns it to them, the light bulb goes off, and they realize all of a sudden that Jesus has been with them all along. Even when they didn't realize it, he had been with them, walking with them every step of the way. And what is their response? What's their response? They, they sprint back down the road. They sprint back down the road as witnesses to other people, to be the unexpected blessing for others whose hope has not yet been kindled. They were sprint back down the road to do what Jesus did, to listen to others, to accompany other people on their journey, to help them, lift them and encourage them. The gospel is pretty clear, is that uh, when Jesus finally did leave, he, left, he clothed each of his followers with power from on high. What that says is there's a bit of God in each and every one of us. We have the power to be that unexpected blessing in this world because we know that there are countless people in our lives who are walking in the midst of great uncertainty. You know, in just a few minutes, we will, again, share a very important meal. And in the uh, ancient Near East, the tradition was that if you ate a meal with someone, if you invited someone to share a meal with you, you were their friend for life. As we share the meal here this day, I hope you'll hear loud and clear that Jesus is saying to each of us, you are my friend for life. And when you leave here, go out and be that unexpected blessing for other people and bring them to Emmaus. Amen.